Oh, well, another school year has come and gone. Students are rejoicing. We imagine teachers are equally as happy. True. And the leader of our area's largest district says she's satisfied with how the last nine months have went. In an interview you'll only see right here on KLBK, Lubbock ISD Superintendent Dr. Kathy Rolo tells us this actually feels like the first normal school year since the pandemic began. The 2022-23 school year? Yes. It's over. I cannot it's believe <laughs> that we are at the end of this school year. It's done. But tomorrow's the last day. Wow. What went well this year? What did you learn this season? Just all of it. How, how did this school year go? I mean, as we um, always do at the end of a school year and reflect back on on the year, um, we had the ability to start the year with some great celebrations um, from our academic progress and um, went from 42% of our kids being in A and B campuses to 75. Um, and so it's been it's been a great year to really um, celebrate our schools and our teachers, um, and then just looking at all of the things that our kids have accomplished this year. We've had more students qualifying for state level competitions and national level competitions than we've ever had in our history. One thing that has been big this year, we've heard about across the state, mm -hmm. teacher shortages. Yes. Uh, I imagine that's still a problem here in Lubbock ISD. Speak to that if you can. You know, it's, it's not so much that we have teachers leaving the profession, um, there's not a mass exodus that you might hear about in the national news, but one thing we have um, seen, and we've, we've actually witnessed this over the last several years, is that there are not as many people going into the profession. And then the routes that those who do come to us from is different than what it used to be. It used to be a much more traditional um, going through a university um, teacher preparation program. And we still have some of those, but many more of our people are now alternatively certified. Another big thing that has been talked about, especially down in Austin, this mm -hmm. legislative session, school choice, yes. school vouchers. Um, right now, uh, lawmakers are kind of in the last few days of session. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on school vouchers and how it might affect public schools? Well, um, my biggest concern with vouchers, um, I'm all about parent choice. And I believe here in Lubbock ISD, we offer parents a great deal of choice and we have a, a really open transfer policy where parents can choose our schools. And if a parent chooses to send their child to a private school, I absolutely um, believe that is their right to do so. My concern with um, at any kind of education savings account or vouchers, whatever you want to call it, is that those are public dollars paid for by taxpayers going to entities with absolutely no accountability other than maybe an accreditation process. Um, there's no fiscal accountability, certainly no accountability for student outcomes. Um, I worry that some of our most vulnerable children and families um, could really be hurt by some of those systems if they're put in place. Right now we have two systems that we are supporting in public schools and that's charter schools and then our traditional school districts like what Lubbock ISD is. Um, inserting a third um, system to support financially it's just over the long run not sustainable to do a great job in all three of those. It's hard to look at our teachers and wonder if we're going to be able to give them a raise. They deserve it, absolutely. Um, it's hard when we look at all of the programs that we offer and options that we offer for our students and wonder if we're going to be able to keep all of those. If we're going to, to truly make an impact on the 5.5 million children in Texas that are in public schools, we need to adequately fund them. This week marks one year since the Uvalde massacre, where 19 students and two teachers were killed inside their classroom at Robb Elementary. Dr. Rollo and I also got into school safety within Lubbock ISD. Um, we have been keeping our doors locked, both external doors and internal doors, for the last um, five years. Um, as far as what we've learned from Uvalde is um, the importance of making sure that, that we don't let children fall through the cracks. Um, because the shooter in that situation is one who who did fall through the cracks. And so really monitoring attendance, making sure that we're checking in with kids who are struggling, um, making sure all of those supports are there. And then um, one thing I am very confident in is in Lubbock ISD police and our protocols and also our partnership with our local law enforcement agencies. Um, we have very quick response times and 
I without a doubt know that our police officers would do the right thing if something were to happen. I also asked Dr. Rollo about her goals for the district next year. She says they're still working towards having 80% of students with in Lubbock ISD at an A or B rated campus by the year 2026. She also mentions the district's new agri -STEM facility that's set to open on the Texas Tech campus this August. Once it's completed, more than 600 students will be able to take courses in things like vet science, meat and dairy processing, plant science, environmental resources, and then have a chance to earn industry certifications before they even graduate from high school. Terry.